Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can have a Manage Controlled Input field where we actually set the value with state, and we handle that with an unchange. I'm also going to talk a little bit about why you would want to do this. So let's get started right now. So in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of form work by building a basic search form. Now, this is going to seem really super convoluted, and we may not even get to the actual searching component of this right now. But I want to explain some stuff here because working with inputs can be very different. So in React, if you were to set the value of an input to anything, right? Let's actually just go ahead and do that. I'm going to come in here. Uh, I'm in contactslist.js, and then um, so actually just wrap this whole thing in a div here. I'm doing this just so I can have another item in here that's not in the UL. Okay, and let's just go ahead and have an input. Now this input is going to be of the type of text. So we can say type equals text. And let's save this. And we need to close this out here. And when we come back to our page, you'll see we have a very basic input we can type in. Nothing really is going on here. In fact, let's go ahead and inspect so we can have our console open at the same time. I'm going to pull my console right here just so we can see it nice and big. And as you can see, obviously nothing's happening. Can enter. Sure, nothing's happening. Okay, so this should be no surprise to you because it's just a basic input type text. However, let's go ahead and type value and value is going to be equal to level up, okay? So check this out. In a normal HTML circumstance, if the value of this text field was equal to level up, actually, in fact, let's, let's show this in action by I'm going to put this just at the, I'm gonna put the same text box in my body right here below app, the ID div. And we'll, we should have two text box now. So we have two text box now, one of which is controlled by React, one of which is not. Check this out. When I actually go to delete the text, I'm hitting backspace right now. Nothing's deleting. I can't type in here because it's setting the value to the form field without an on change handler. Basically, this is saying, hey, text box, the value is level up and it's not changing. Meanwhile, our text box that's not controlled by React, look at that, I can type in it just like normal. So this is an important distinction. Now there is always the option to set the default value. And if we come to our React, let me get rid of this one in our body now. We don't need it. Uh, let's come to context list. And instead of value, I'm going to say default value. And that's going to be in, uh, in camel case, so default value like so is going to be level up. Now default value is, let's refresh this. Now we can type in this, right? Still no events or anything firing or anything going on, but either way, uh, that's just a default value. So that's pretty cool. If you need to have a value in there and you still need to be able to edit it, default value is the way to go. However, this isn't going to be how we're going to be working with inputs most often. We're going to want to actually have a value in here and it's going to be set to a state variable. And we're going to handle some stuff with an on change to make this all work. So let's get started with these controlled components. Okay, so to control this component, let's take this back to a value instead of a default value. And now I'm going to have the value be equal to, and this is without quotes here. Let's get rid of these quotes. It's going to be bracket, bracket, and we're going to say this dot state dot search. Okay, so this is going to be the search text field and, and we don't necessarily have this dot state dot search dot set just yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to indent this to make this a little bit prettier here. Okay. So we have values now set this dot state dot search, but this doesn't really exist. So let's go ahead and do that up here before our render method. Okay. And now we need to add a constructor with the ES6 syntax. So we can say construct tor like so constructor, and then we're going to have this uh, parentheses and then brackets just like we have for our render and inside of here let's go ahead and have a super function so super and then 
semicolon like so. And now we can have this dot state is equal to, and this is going to be an object. Now we need to set this dot state dot search. So we can say search, which is going to be the property is going to be equal now to level up. And we can finish this off with a semicolon as well. So as you can see in the constructor, uh, first we're calling super, then we're saying this dot state is equal to, uh, we have the property of search with level up. So this is setting the default state for search, which we're then going to be using down here in our value, we can come to Chrome here, refresh. And now you can see that this once again says level up. Again, we can't edit it. Okay, so let's head back to our sublime text. And now let's actually get to the point where we're going to be controlling this uh, input. I'm going to put these on separate lines just so it's easier to see here. And now we're going to need an on change. Just like our error message said, we had a value set without an on change. Now, the reason why we need to do this is going to give us complete control over this value. Anytime it's changed, we're going to have total control over what's going on. So we can say on change. Now on change is going to be equal to this dot update search. Okay. So now this is just going to be with the brackets. Keep in mind, even though this dot update search is going to be a function here, we don't want to have the parentheses. Okay, so let's go ahead and then define that right up here below the constructor above the render, we can say update search parentheses brackets. And now let's go ahead and just console dot log yo. So I'm going to console log yo here. And now what should happen is when this text value changes, or when it's trying to change, we should be getting yo. And you'll notice my yo count is going up every single time I click the keyboard. So that's exactly what we're looking for. But now we just need this value to actually update. So let's go ahead and make that happen. If we were to pass an event here, and console log event, We can see that we have an event firing. What we're actually needing to grab is the target. And then inside of that target, we're going to be looking for the value. So we can say event dot target dot value to grab the value of whatever this field is. Keep in mind, we're getting that because the target is this input and the value is going to be this dot state dot search. So at any given point, when we type in here, after refreshing, you could see it's level up plus whatever key I'm pressing. Okay. But we're not having that updated here. So the next time we go to do anything, it's overwritten by the level up once again. So that's why we're not having any sort of visual update. We're not having the text change here at all. So let's go ahead and modify this now with a last step to actually modify this input value. Like I said, this seems convoluted, but having this kind of control is going to be really good for more complex situations. So now we can say this dot set state and we can pass in search and the value of search is now going to be equal to event dot target dot value and one more change we need to now actually write this dot update search but we need to do that like this we need to say dot bind and then we need to pass in this okay so that now we're going to have access and we need to pass in this. Let's go ahead and now refresh our page. As you can see, oh, when we hit backspace, the U is gone, the L, okay. Whatever we're typing in here is now getting set into state. And you might be wondering, again, this seems complex, but now we have total control over this input field. And we can even do something like Let's go ahead up here where we have where it's actually setting our state, we can limit this. And let's say we only want this search bar to handle 20 characters for some reason, we could say value dot sub string 
and then we can give this starting at the beginning and going through let's say 20 we can only, we can effectively limit the amount of characters that are being displayed here or even getting saved into this input so let's search hello and as you can see as i reach this limit here it's no longer saving anything else cool so we now have complete control over this input and like I said it seems sort of abstract right now but this is sort of the react way of doing things and you're going to get used to it so don't worry too much about that but on change we're updating the state and that and the state is getting passed back into the value, therefore allowing us to have complete control over this. In the next video, we're actually going to use this value to search through our props here. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. Hit me up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. I love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.